Hello and welcome to day 78. We begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts and minds so that we may hear your voice and be given the courage to act upon it throughout this day. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today, St. Alphonsus is giving us one of the easiest ways uh, that we can practice vocal prayer, um, and it's entitled ejaculations. Now, just to pause for a second, because when we hear ejaculations in our society today, unfortunately, we don't think of spontaneous prayer. We don't think of what many people call aspirations. So um, it's one of those of where, as you hear it, um, if you struggle with your mind drifting um, because you hear the word ejaculations, then just think aspirations. I'm aspiring, you know, to offer prayer to God. Um, so without further ado, I will begin. The easiest means of practicing vocal prayer consists in uttering fervent ejaculations. These pious outpourings of the heart need not be restricted to any particular place or time. They are in order at all times and in all places, at work, at meals, at recreation, at home, or away from home. They may take the forms of acts of desire, conformity, love, oblation, or self-denial. They may be acts of petition, thanksgiving, humility, confidence, and the like. The saints of God place greater value on these little prayers than on long devotions because the former are more calculated to keep us in the presence of God. St. John Chrysostom says that he who frequently utters ejaculations closes the door against Satan and prevents his constant annoyance with wicked thoughts. It is by acts of love, conformity, and self-oblation together with the invocation of the holy names of Jesus and Mary, that we give the greatest pleasure to God. One who loves thinks constantly of the object of his love. A soul that loves God will therefore always think of him and seek occasions by fervent sighs and ejaculations to manifest her love. Be careful on all occasions, alone as well as in company, to say frequently to your heavenly bridegroom, O oh my God, I desire only thee and nothing else. Or, I give myself wholly to thee. I desire what thou desireth. Do with me according to thy good pleasure. These few words alone are enough. My God, I love thee. Or, my love, my all. You may also, without uttering a word, raise your eyes to heaven or cast a loving glance at the tabernacle or the crucifix. These silent acts are especially to be recommended because they require no effort. They can more frequently be made and are often attended with greater fervor than other ejaculations. The best acts of love, of course, are those that well up from the depth of the heart at the impulse of the Holy Ghost. The perfection of divine love consists in the union of our will with the will of God. Therefore, we may not desire anything but that which God desires. If we do his holy will, no matter to what station in life the Lord may call us, we shall surely arrive at sanctity. It will be profitable then to select choice passages from Holy Scripture and to repeat them often in order to foster a union of our will with the divine. For example, says often, say often with the apostle, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? In contradictions and afflictions of body and soul, say with the blessed Redeemer, My God and my Father, be it done to me as thou wilt. Or, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Lord recommended to St. Catherine of Genoa, every time she said the Our Father, to pay particular attention to these words, Thy will be done, and to beg for the grace to fulfill the will of God as perfectly as the saints in heaven. So thus ends our section today about ejaculations or fervent, you know, outpourings, pious outpourings of your heart. And what I particularly um, love about this is that he talks about things that you could say, um, but then he also speaks about silent acts of being able to 
uh, look lovingly, uh, gaze upon a crucifix, or, you know, if you're a church, at the tabernacle. Um, one of the biggest things, of course, is allowing what is in your heart to be expressed. And you can express it in silence, or you can express it aloud. Depending, of course, whether or not you're in company, and the company might think you're a little weird when you go, Oh, my beloved, how I adore thee. <laughs> you get my point. So, because it, it could be misunderstood. Um, so anyway, uh, one of the big things that he suggests, and this would be uh, one of the things that I would suggest that you uh, make a practice, is to select different verses from Scripture that you then can repeat those you know so for me one of is some psalm 27 the lord is my light and my salvation whom should i fear this becomes you know when i feel anxious is a way to kind of settle myself down another when i become impatient or i'm not seeing what's going on you know is that that whole idea of uh to be quiet before the lord um, and uh, others, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and shall rise up like wings of eagles. And that's in Isaiah 40, by the way, um, 40, 31. But it's something where whatever the words of Scripture, which are God's words to us, they're not just written down, but they're to us, we have an opportunity to be able to use them to be able to help us express our love and to deepen our love. Um, so one thing that we can take great confidence in, and St. John Christodom tells us this, is that whenever we utter these type of pious expressions, these ejaculations, it closes the door against Satan, and it prevents him from constantly annoying us with wicked thoughts. So this is why uh, I believe the next section, yes it is, um, is about the holy names and the power of them. Um, and this is the fact that when we profess the name of Jesus and we bring Jesus you know, physically into our presence by expressing the word has power and he is the word made flesh, um, so the word is then present with us and Satan can't stand to be in Jesus' presence. He can't do it. Um, so one of the things that we can bear in mind is we can even lovingly just say, Oh my Jesus, Mary, Joseph, we can call upon the saints. We can do these things, but especially uh, calling upon our Lord. So um, the resolution for today, I would challenge you um, to come up with whatever phrase it is that has touched your heart in scripture already or um, a, an appropriate one that may be one of the ones that I read from St. Alphonsus and use that today. So for example, you know, uh, one of the ones I shared, you know, um, another one is be still before the Lord and wait patiently on him. That, that's, a, that's a big one for me. Um, or Jesus, I trust in you. Or again, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Whatever it is that touches your heart and brings you joy and helps you increase your love and thought and devotion towards our Lord, that's what I want you to use today. And I want you to do it at least two times uh, during the day. I want you to be intentional about it. I'd love to have lots of overachievers and you tell me that you did it you know, 15, 20, 50, 100 times even. Um, but the fact is, is that we start with doing once or twice and then we get better from there because our Lord always will take our efforts and will then give us his grace and then that makes it even better. And that's how Mary helps us too. But that's for another day. So know of my continued prayers for each and every one of you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Um, we're now less than two weeks from the end of this and I'm very excited uh, for your continued journey. Um, and so know again of my continued prayers. God bless. See you tomorrow.